Hello and welcome to this first in a series of videos where we are going to look at macros in Cubase. For those of you who aren't sure, macros are a collection of commands which allow you to make much more complicated tasks simple and will greatly enhance your workflow if you find even just a few which speed up jobs that you do which are repetitive and tedious. Because after all, a lot of this really is about learning to work faster and spend more time being creative and musical rather than becoming a programmer in quotes, you know, and just doing technical boring things. So if you haven't found them yet, the first thing we're going to do in this video is look at uh, macros which are pre-programmed and come with Cubase. So under edit, at the bottom of the menu, we see five different options which we're going to look at. And then in future videos, we will look at uh, programming your own macros and how you can really speed up what you're doing. So here we see the five which come with Cubase and we will look at them uh, one at a time. So the first thing is duplicate selected tracks without data. Now, obviously, if you want to duplicate a track, it's really easy. You can just right click, do duplicate tracks, and then there you go, it's done. The problem with that is that you can have a lot of data. Now, obviously you can have all of the MIDI data, which we can see here, but what's hidden, let me just uh, remove that. What's hidden is that there is a lot of automation. So we can actually see with this track, we've got loads of tracks of automation. And in fact, there's more. If we went through, there's about 20 different channels of automation, which you would need to delete all of them. So sometimes you just want to use a synth and any effects you've got without the other data. So by using the macro there, you can see it duplicates that track, but um, and also deletes an inactive um, track version, which we'll see later on, but leaves you with the synth ready to go, but with effectively a clean slate in terms of automation and MIDI data, etc. The next option, we've got export audio mix down whole song. Again, this is a task we've all done countless times. It's a bit tedious. You set locators uh, around everything you've got and then go to file, export, audio, mix down and so on. And this will do it all in one go. So you will see when I select it, you will look at the top of the screen and you'll see the locators get set and instantly we're in the audio mix down. So that's, that's easier than setting the locator. So it saves you doing control A, uh, then P and then doing that. So there you go, we could type in file name and we would be exporting. It's easy as that. Next one, move selection to new track version. So we're just going to do a little bit of editing on this. I'm just going to remove that duplicate track. Let's cut up this into a few different parts. So here, this will move them to a new track version. Now, if you've not used track versions, uh, check out the video on it elsewhere on the channel, but they are super useful particularly if you're maybe got two different options you know being indecisive about which one you're going to go with or helping you make a decision it can be really useful with recording singers and comping takes together etc so again we go to macros move selection to new track version and we can see now we've got that track version there and then under here we've got the original one so now we've got three different ones so there's our parts we started out with there's the other parts. And then in fact, under V1, we've got some other bits from where I was playing around with it earlier. So between V2 and V3, we've got those. But again, while it's not the most difficult task to do in the world, it's much quicker doing that than it is to do the alternative manually. Now, if we look again under macros, we see this one. Now this one is a real time saver. So selected tracks to new folder and add group channel. So here we've got these multi-tracked drums. Now, as a normal course of things, often you do want to put multiple tracks which make sense together in a folder and also on a group channel. And this will do them all in one go. So we've got all those selected and it's as simple as going to macro, selected tracks, new folder and add group channel. It will ask us for a name for the group channel. So I'm just going to call it drum group. And there we go. So we've got our drum group there. And if we look at that, you can see all of those. In fact, we'll look in the mixer. We can see that all of those have been rooted to drum group as easy as that so that saves multiple steps and it's really common to do this in a session that you you think oh, i'm just going to record one guitar and then 27 guitar tracks later you sound like you know some crazy jeff ling composition you think oh, i need to get some control over these so this is something that often happens in the course of 
normal recording events. Last one, fairly straightforward, zoom to project. So it's horizontal and vertical zoom to take in all the information that's in the project. So if we were to zoom out and let's say I will just, uh, let's just put a few of these over here. Zoom to project will take that into account. Just go. So you see that it will zoom to the extreme of horizontal and vertical zoom and allow you to see as much as you can on the screen. Again, yeah, something you can do with two or three uh, clicks otherwise, but it's it's nice and quick to do that. Now, we're just going to take a look at where these macros are and what they're made up of in preparation for the next video. So they're found under key commands and they're at the little bottom, the bottom of the window here in a little section where you click show macros and then they appear. So we can see there are five macros and if we click the little plus, we can see what they're made up of. So the uh, duplicate selected tracks without data. So it duplicates the, select, the track and then it deletes the automation, deletes any inactive versions and then deletes um, everything on there by selecting everything and then deleting it. So it's five steps and you can do it with just one. A similar story with um, the export audio one. So it selects all, sets your locators, deselects everything and then does an audio mix down. The move selection, again, copy, delete, new version, and then paste the origin. Selected tracks to new folder, ironically, is actually just two steps, but it's it's easier because obviously the add group to uh, add track to selected group channel is only in the mixer, so it's it's more than two steps if you didn't have the mixer open already. And zoom to project again, it's just two, but fairly straightforward. These can be assigned to keyboard shortcuts. Now you don't do it in this bottom section, you do it up in the top. So under this section here, we can see that macros comes under its own section and there they all are. So if you wanted to assign zoom to project to something, let's say you would click on zoom to project and assign it just the same way as you would any other keyboard uh, shortcut. So let's just click here and let's see if there's a combination of Z because I'm thinking Z for zoom. So maybe if we do shift out control Z, you can see nothing is assigned to that at the moment because if it had been, it would be appearing here. In fact, I'll just show you that. So if I do control Z, you can see that's assigned to edit undo. If we do control out shift Z, it's not assigned to anything. So I'm going to assign that to zoom to project. And now whenever I press control out shift Z, let's just delete that to give it some action. And then there you go. So that's an overview of macros. Now in the next few videos, we're going to look at how you can program one yourself and what kind of things you can do with them. But it's it's almost limitless. As you can see in the uh, key commands window, there's an awful lot of things here, which is why we've got a search function because there are hundreds of different options here for you to choose from. And knowing what's available is, is an important part of learning this. And there'll be things that come up and you go, oh, you can do it there, etc. So there's, there's lots uh, to go through in here and learn. But if you can find things which are going to speed your workflow and mean you're spending time being creative rather than working in a sort of technical programming role, then that's what this is all about. And that will really increase your, I think it increases your enjoyment of doing this because you feel like you're you're really working on what you're supposed to be working on rather than say being a technical programmer so i hope you've enjoyed this video check out the others in the series to see what else you can do with macros and if you like the videos please do subscribe